To understand how Crocs got to this point, you have to start from the beginning. Crocs was founded by two entrepreneurs, George Bodecker Jr. and his partner Lyndon Duke Hansen. These two entrepreneurial guys wanted to create a foam clog. Now clogs have been around for centuries, but they're typically made out of wood, not foam. We don't need to tell you which one is softer. But who would want to wear a foam clog? Duke and Bodecker thought boaters would love a comfortable shoe or sandal that they could wear out on the water without worrying about it getting wet. They debuted their first prototype at a Florida boating expo in 2001. They had 200 pairs of the first croc shoes on display and for sale. They went on to sell every single one of them. Bodecker and Duke, encouraged by their early success, decided to manufacture more crocs. Eventually, they made an interesting discovery. The duo realized crocs appealed to the wider population and not just boaters. Take nurses, for example. They're on their feet most of the day. Crocs became popular because nurses want something that's easy to slip on and off and comfortable to stand on. By 2006, croc sales were tripling each quarter until 2007, by which time the foam clogs were gaining attention from the media, and not because fashion journalists thought that they were particularly cool. In 2021, Crocs released their growth numbers, which showed their revenue was up over 90% from last year. The funny thing is, Crocs had tried marketing their shoes as Italian-styled, something that was cool to wear. But the fashion media wouldn't have it. They crucified Crocs, saying most people found them hideous and sharing their own personal opinions on this intrusive fashion trend. Fashion consultant Tim Gunn asked how anyone could wear something that looked like a silly plastic hoof. In 2008, an essayist for Newsweek wrote an entire anti-Crocs piece, trying to argue that Crocs were objectively terrible. Maxim ranked Crocs number six on their list of worst things to happen to men in 2007, and Time Magazine put Crocs amongst their 50 worst inventions of all time. The public, much like the fashion world, was starkly divided on how they felt about these new foam-based footwear. As previously mentioned, many people thought they looked ugly, gaudy, trashy, and looked down on people who wore them out in public. However, there were still a few people who wore them. Former United States President George W. Bush was photographed in 2007 wearing a pair of Crocs with socks out in public. And two years later, then First Lady Michelle Obama was seen wearing a pair of Crocs. Then, in 2015, something changed. It was a slight change, and not necessarily a long-term one, but it foreshadowed what would happen in 2020. During a charity event, Prince William and Kate Middleton's oldest son, Prince George, was photographed wearing a pair of blue Crocs. He wasn't even two years old yet, but the young royal caused Crocs revenue for that quarter to grow 1,500% over a seven-day span. Of course, the craze eventually died down, and Crocs went back to being the ugly shoe loved only by a few. But the royals showed that even someone as fashion conscious as them could wear Crocs and pull the unorthodox look off. Although, they still had yet to reach mainstream popularity. Prince George's endorsement was the equivalent of a one-hit wonder. They would need a whole slew of hits. There was also another issue impeding Crocs. It's style. Most people didn't care if you wore Crocs at home, but wearing Crocs out in public was a different story. Public Croc wearers were seen as sloppy and unfashionable. If people didn't wear them out in public, then how would they become trendy? From 2015 to 2020, Crocs became somewhat more accepted by fashion and society, though not exactly exalted. They became sort of a joke, a fashion statement that said, I'm casual and I don't care who knows it. And Crocs revenue growth reflected that attitude. During that five-year span, Crocs annual revenue grew from 1.02 billion in 2017 to 1.39 billion in 2020. That year, 2020, changed the future of Crocs forever. They may not have sold significantly more shoes that year, but the bizarre circumstances that the pandemic created set Crocs up for a ride into the business stratosphere. Everyone remembers where they were when quarantine began. It was just one of those events. Millions of people all around the world were stuck inside their homes for months, some longer. Brick and mortar stores like Walmart took a hit, while e-commerce companies like Amazon saw their revenues skyrocket. Zoom, a video communication service, grew from an obscure company to a household name seemingly overnight as businesses had to move work meetings online. But how did the pandemic change Crocs? The virus changed Crocs in a number of ways, but no change was more impactful than the rise of casual fashion. COVID restrictions caused many people to spend more time indoors, taking away the need to buy a large wardrobe of nice clothes. 
People got used to being comfortable all the time. And when quarantine was lifted, vaccines taken, businesses reopened, many people didn't want to sacrifice the comfort they had acclimated so well to during quarantine. High heel shoes were replaced by Nike running shoes, and of course, Crocs. Once people started wearing their Crocs around the house, they didn't want to stop wearing them, so they wore them out. And before long, hardly anyone double-taked at someone wearing a pair of Crocs at the grocery store or at a dine-in restaurant. The change started showing itself in 2021. Crocs reported their revenue grew nearly 100% over the year. That may not sound like much, but when you show the actual numbers, the growth is significant. Crocs revenue in 2020 hit 1.39 billion, while 2021 procured 2.3 billion. The company also became more efficient along with their financial success. CNBC reported their net revenue grew from $11 million to $98 million, resulting in the dollar per share, a metric to determine the value of a company, to go from mere cents to over a dollar per share. The impressive numbers captured the attention of investors who flocked to their brokerages and helped boost Crocs stock price from $81 per share to $180 per share. COVID helped Crocs become mainstream. However, the company certainly made its own contribution. Croc started out as a small boating shoemaker, morphing into a subversive fashion company after its initial founding. The founders asked themselves, if Crocs could make that long transition, then why couldn't they go mainstream? The executives answered this plucky question by creating a marketing strategy designed to take their foam clogs to the next level. Crocs always sought out endorsements. But after Prince George sent a volt of hype into their revenue stream, the company realized they could recreate the same effect with other influential celebrities. They started targeting A-list celebrities in the music industry, the kind of artists who set fashion trends. Crocs signed Justin Bieber and Post Malone, amongst many other artists, to endorse their brand. When Nicki Minaj posted a picture of herself wearing pink Crocs, sales for pink Crocs went up exponentially. Post Malone certainly fit Crocs' casual, let-loose image. He and the Biebs posed with their Crocs in many photos that found their way to social media, where they helped change people's perspective on Crocs. The clog company continued seeking out musical celebrities. They convinced Latino rap superstar Bad Bunny to endorse Crocs as well, expanding their reach to new demographics in countries other than the United States. These spokespersons were chosen based on various characteristics, such as Malone's lovable hobo image and Bad Bunny's international appeal. Overall, however, the spokespersons were picked due to one attribute they all shared. They target young people. Crocs specifically wanted to target teenagers and college-aged kids. That age demographic has historically set trends in industries like music, entertainment, and of course fashion. In the same way that boomers ushered in rock and roll during the 50s, Gen Z helped make Crocs mainstream. Crocs CEO Andrew Rees explained the strategy to analysts during a meeting. He told stakeholders how impactful these particular celebrities are on social media, especially on apps like Instagram, where young people go more than anywhere else for fashion trends. The marketing department also provided their influencers with unique styles. For example, Justin Bieber can be seen lying down in a photograph surrounded by dozens of custom-designed Crocs. The marketers wanted to show that Crocs were more than a boring, ugly shoe. They showed Crocs could be artistic. After all, people had already seen regular, single-color Crocs. Crocs with special designs and color combinations, on the other hand, were far more likely to catch people's eye. Crocs also wanted to market their shoes as a foam canvas, something expressive teens could customize with either markers or on the Crocs website. Teens can also accessorize their Crocs with little clip-on charms called gibbets. Crocs also joined forces with legitimate fashion organizations to change their casual image. The fashion industry had looked down on Crocs since their rise in 2006. Victoria Beckham, a fashion icon since the 90s, was appalled when she saw Crocs pop up on runways in recent years. Crocs entered the designer fashion scene through, you guessed it, partnerships. Their biggest business relationship is with Balenciaga, who provide Crocs an endorsement from the high fashion world. Since the pandemic, Crocs have managed to dip their toes into every demographic imaginable. But what does their future hold? Can Crocs keep the success going, or are they doomed to be a fad? Musical artist Quest Love DJed the 93rd Academy Awards in 2021. The awards had used an orchestra for decades prior, making Quest Love's one-man jazz hip-hop performance revolutionary. Quest Love subverted expectations with his fashion choices as well. He wore a pair of Crocs during the entire ceremony, 
which is traditionally black tie. That was back in 2021. Where will Crocs be in the years to come? People are becoming more and more comfortable with going out in public again. Could that kill the casual-driven hype created by the pandemic and in the process Crocs? Croc executives don't think so. As long as famous people keep wearing them in front of the right people, that is. And of course, sticking to their roots. Crocs are popular. Usually when a fashion item becomes popular, the designer will jack up the price. Brands do it all the time. But Crocs promises to keep their shoes accessible to everyone. Anyone can go on Amazon or the official Crocs store and buy themselves a pair for around $50 to $60. It's an affordable price for a famous shoe and may just ensure Crocs keep growing regardless of COVID restrictions being lifted. Click to watch one of these next videos and let us know in the comment section what you'd rather wear, a pair of Crocs or a pair of Birkenstocks.